now I would like to invite Ms. Dominique Day, chairperson of the working group of experts of people of African descent, to take the floor, please. I'm Dominique Day, I chair the UN Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent, and I'm very pleased to join you today. Although Black and non-Black communities all over the world possess, use, sell, traffic, and access the drug economy at similar rates, the war on drugs has always targeted people of African descent. Globally, the war on drugs has disregarded the massive costs to the dignity, humanity, and freedom of people of African descent despite compelling evidence that it has succeeded better as a means of racial surveillance and control than as a mechanism to curb the use and sale of narcotics, which has only grown dramatically in the nearly half century since the war on drugs began. The counter-narcotics economy in which many of us take part has thrived on the backs of Black people, depriving generations of opportunity, family, and future. This casual exploitation is familiar to students of history who understand the social construction of race began with the need to rationalize the exploitation and disposability of Africans for profit and power. The legacy mindsets of these historical atrocities persist today. And of course, the historical atrocities I refer to are colonialism and the trade and trafficking in enslaved Africans. So fast forward to today, to COVID, and in January 2021, a study showed an increase in opioid overdoses during COVID and likely disproportionate effect on Black people because of ongoing racial disparities in mortality and morbidity, less access to naloxone, and other factors. In reality, at this moment, we've seen that structural racism plays out predictably in COVID-19 as in any other crisis that puts our priorities in stark focus. However, in response to COVID-19, some public health and occupational safety concerns have actually impacted drug policies and enforcement. Perhaps the most obvious of these is that some judges have reconsidered carceral sentences and policies that have awarded humanitarian release for certain individuals in the course of the pandemic. But others did not. COVID-19 has exacerbated the prison overcrowding problem. 20% of the 11 million uh, person prison population globally are detained for drug related offenses. And in many countries, the vast majority of these people are people of African descent. This is a moment of opportunity and we should really see it as such and center our goals and our efforts in that direction. It's a moment of opportunity to end the war on drugs. We understand this ineffective war is really the continued systematic racism and drug law enforcement, which, which started uh, before the pandemic, has continued throughout. We see an ongoing lack of harm reduction services for people who use drugs and more. In some states, drug policy reform plans have been announced in 2021, and this is a great sign. But the international community should step up to its responsibility here, perhaps in ways it has failed to do during the COVID-19 pandemic generally. It's time to change the narrative, end a war on drugs that has only expanded the presence and the harms of drugs, and to explicitly demand an end to drug policies that have a disparate focus and impact on people of African descent. Thank you.